butt egg, road rash, tattoo, karate toilet. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Dan. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Joe Paisley. Fred Flintstone. Fred, Fred Flintstone. Flintstone. The amount of emails you got, it makes mm -hmm. me so happy. It just says, Dear Joe and Fred, at, at least 80 of them this week. I love it. Had said that, which uh, which really made me feel good. I feel like I'm a little Fred Flintstone esque. Yeah. I have the same temper. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. 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 We'll play off of it. Yeah, okay. uh, episode 10. We are into double digits officially. Double digits now. That feels nice. Uh, it's a nice step. <laughs> it's a nice step. We've mm -hmm. uh, And now we won't get new double digits until we hit 100. I, I hope, I, I'd like to have the show go until we can get eight digits. Okay, that's bold. How, we'll we'll be we, pretty old. We're going to have to pick it up. Mm -hmm. We're going to start doing one show every day <laughs> until we're 300 years old. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> right. New episodes of Is Be Dumb every Wednesday at noon, wherever you find your podcast. The goal is always to come out the other side of this episode being less dumb than we were heading in. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of that. I've been, I've been doing good. I haven't set any gas cans next to any fires. <laughs> yeah. And I've been parking for the most part where I'm supposed to. That's great. Mm -hmm. That's good for you. I actually thought about you when we were having a little family fire in the side yard. Mm -hmm. uh, the other day, I used some gas to start the fire, and I poured it in there beforehand <laughs> and then walked real far away. Nice. And put it down. So you're learning stuff too. I'm learning, I'm learning from how your dumb shit. So I, I freaked out for a second because I thought I had a bug in my eye because I don't know what they're called, but oh, Coeur d'Alene right now. Snow it's flies. Snow flies. Blanketed. Aphids. Yes. So many of them. You hate them. I love them. Yeah, you love them. I just, I just don't like how uh, I have naturally oily skin. Okay. And when I come inside, uh, I look like, uh, oh, my face looks like a windshield that's been on a long drive. <laughs> yeah. I have a little bug stuck all over my face. I had to eat about thirty or forty of them the other day because I went to I decided to go get some tacos and then I <laughs> ate them down by the by the lake. Mm -hmm. And there are so many of them, I just had to eat some. They just landed on my food, and there's nothing I can do about it. Yeah, They're so cute. It. That's why I was kind of happy, happy, cute they uh, monster. They probably don't taste bad. Probably. They're fuzzy. so little. Yeah, <laughs> they're so little. They didn't little. overpower the chicken. Good. Not too much aphid flavor. <laughs> yeah, not that time. <laughs> uh, find us online at Facebook and Instagram at Is We Dumb. If you want to send in the segment content, keep doing that for any of the segments. Even if you don't even know what segment you think it might go into, mm -hmm. send it our way anyway. And that's dumb at isbedumb.com. Everything else, send that to info at isbedumb.com. You'll find links for the videos that we watch and all the stuff inside the segment for uh, to you from internet. We'll post that in the episode description. If you want to get some merch, badmagicmerch.com or isbedumb.com. And speaking of merch, mm -hmm. I was I was g getting ready to jump in, and then you did it. <laughs> Come over here and whack it. I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> got, new, got new cool stuff. New stuff. Uh, yeah, go to isbedumb.com or badmagicmerch.com. Mm -hmm. We've got uh, dummy beanies in mm -hmm. a variety of colors, which is very simple. It just says dummy mm -hmm. across the front. We have a sweet hoodie. Mm -hmm. Very cool design. I, yep. um, I don't know how to describe it. I, we were we, Logan and I mm -hmm. were actually talking about it, and I decided I, I, I settled on it's like a vintage inspired design that has like a multicolored drag down the Ooh, front. Look at you fancy guys. I know. Like you know, just there's a, like a mm -hmm. lot of colors, and the logo is just kind of you know so, you spread know, out across the front. Like when you're hanging out with your friends, and you're like, "Man, I just I wish I had a new multicolor drag kind of you know like heathered hoodie." If you want, if you want, like, oh, I hear you. If you want to sound fucking mm -hmm. cool, guy, if I had a nickel for every time I talked about a multicolor drag on my wardrobe, mm -hmm. of like, almost one nickel. The like the best way to say that leaning up against a jukebox, <laughs> <laughs> like in hey, the fucking kids. fonds. Hey kids. You guys want a little bit of a multicolored drag? I love how you just went, in my mind, you went straight to happy days. That was an old, <laughs> that was an old visual. <laughs> oh, I know happy visual. days. <laughs> right, yeah, I yeah. turned it off the second it ever came on after Saved by the Bell. You just went full Henry Winkler. <laughs> yeah. Leaning on the jukebox. Yeah, exactly. And then we also have a new t-shirt that all of the, the custom drawn thumbnails or uh, pictures that we have for the thumbnails. Uh -huh. like, I mean, how our episodes are randomly worded. Oh, yeah, We yeah, have yeah. pictures for all of that. Mm -hmm. And the t-shirt has uh, all the ones so far listed down the front. Yes. Which I uh, find hilariously confusing, <laughs> uh, but it looks really good. Yay. Yeah, so again, check that out, badmagicmerch.com or isbedumb.com. Now, before we get off to the is we dumb, mm -hmm. I do have a couple quick notes. Last week, we made fun of the gas bag lady. <laughs> Correct. Uh, we talked about how stupid it is to basically put liquid in a bag, no matter what it was. Right. Now, however, it turns out lots of places <laughs> do sell drinks in bags. In fact, our neighbors <laughs> to the north in Canada have bagged milk, mm -hmm. and the idea behind it is you buy it, you take it home, you cut it open, you pour it into your own pitcher. Okay. So then, and that's like a, like a, 
But I'm guessing that's like a, a, a properly sealed bag made for that purpose. Right. As opposed to a cheap grocery <laughs> bag, 90% of which have holes in them right. to begin with. And they'll serve with gas. Yeah. They'll serve, serve drinks and, and bags out in Mexico right. too. And they'll okay. just put a straw in the bag. Um, just okay. up the waste cups, I guess. I don't know. They waste bags instead. I bet. I bet absolutely nobody's drinking gas out of a fucking bag in Mexico. That, yeah. That's, well, that's I don't point. say nobody. Yeah. Well, no, maybe a couple dudes <laughs> yeah, on but, hard times. Yeah, but no one's putting gas in a in a grocery bag. So you know that's still insane, and you guys can all go fuck yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> still completely insane. <laughs> it is co- uh, completely insane. Uh, and then also, uh, I would like to note that all riding lawnmowers actually have headlights. Uh, so good thing I didn't start that business idea. <laughs> from episode nine. <laughs> well, but I was talking about the walking yeah, lights. Clearly, but... Joe and I don't use riding lawnmowers. <laughs> we haven't we haven't reached that part mm. of success that we can we have to we have to and walk just, behind these and things. And his age too. I remember like my elderly uh, neighbor Jim. Mm-hmm. Like he has a nice riding lawnmower, and when I got mine, like which is I'm excited that it has like you know you push it and it the, has its own self propelled tires. I'm yeah, like, Fuck yeah, just follow behind it. It's like a horse is dragging helping you. Mm-hmm. 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 And he and he's like, oh, good luck with that. You're gonna want one of these here. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, but I'm Dick. not, I'm not 80 yet. But, 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 but now as I'm, I think I'm like 70 now, <laughs> I, think right, I just yeah. turned around, I'm around 70 or something. Yeah. Uh, but, but lately I have been like, that, is, that does look pretty sweet. <laughs> I know. If I had a shed in the back and I could just ride it into the shed, uh, that's pretty nice. I, I buy them every time. Like <sighs> if I go to the hardware store, I go by, I go someday, mm-hmm. someday me and you, buddy, we're going to mow some shit. I like a murdered out like Mad Max type lawnmower. I don't know if they even make those hydraulics, mm-hmm. which would completely defeat defeat the purpose. But I don't care. I want some kind of spiraling defense blades, right? In case any deer mm-hmm. or anything try and sneak up on me, I'm on the lawn and just fucking <laughs> shred them. I want an injection seat. So when I'm done mowing injection the lawn, injection or ejection? Ejection. Oh, okay. So okay. You're, I'm done mowing the lawn. I just go <laughs> boot and just just shoots mm-hmm. me off, and I land on my deck. How how great? <laughs> and walk inside. <laughs> <laughs> how great would that be? I mean, it's insane. It would never happen. But it's just in a, in a in a weird world <laughs> where <laughs> if you're really good at parachuting, like when you finish mowing your lawn, you push and you just fucking eject yourself, like uh, Madman Mike Hughes, that guy who died on the rocket, the Flyers guy. Uh-huh. But uh, but a better ending. Right. You you get shot up in the air and then you parachute back down somewhere in the neighborhood. <laughs> Just, and or right into your window, <laughs> your open front window, you <laughs> shoo, shoo, right into the couch, <laughs> sit down, land down, bag of M&Ms, yeah. all done. Can you, I would, that would Daddy be my, nailed it. That would be my favorite neighbor. <laughs> if like for every summer, we're like, oh, it's summer. And you're like, you're excited for like Whee! people like vacations. Oh, Larry's parachuting this week. And then you're, you're fired up. And you're, you're keeping an eye on his lawn. It's looking high. He's going to be moaning you're any day do it now. Today? We got to watch this. We got to watch this. we the whole family around to watch Larry. Parachute people, up his lawnmower. People are calling and say, "Hey, can I, can I, uh, can I get c- cut home? Just can I cut work a little, like two hours early?" <laughs> Larry's mowing his yard. Right. We gather around, we have snacks, and we watch him parachute yeah, afterwards. You have like a noise sensor that whenever you hear a lawnmower, like <laughs> it'll buzz all your phones. Get home immediately. Yeah, just like a, like a like an Amber Alert type thing, <laughs> yeah. but for Larry's lawnmower. <laughs> right. <laughs> I would use it for so many uh, other things though too. Like I would, uh, the if I just, yeah, if I just mm-hmm. wanted to get out of there, like the kids, everyone was pissing me off. I just like, <sighs> just wander outside and blast myself <laughs> the fuck out off my uh, lawnmower. That'd be great to have some special backpack that you can just, it lo- that it will somehow shoot you up into the air and right. it'll allow you to parachute down like whenever you want. I'm just picturing like uh, at a softball game. You know, it's just a bit fucking boring. Right, exactly. And it's, you know, it's zero to one or whatever. Just some kind of kids of, at, a, at a classical music concert for, oh, for the kids. Lineup is weak. Mm-hmm. With, yeah, the clarinets are always fucking things up. All of them. And First then, chair barely has her shit together. Right. Of course, second chair is going to be terrible. And then uh, I did have a fucking, I had an aphid <laughs> in my eye. I just got that little son of a bitch. God damn. Uh, I've been struggling with it for the last five minutes. I thought I was going crazy. I thought you were winking at me. I had an aphid in my eye. I was waiting for like a funny joke. He was crawling on my <laughs> eyelashes. Uh, <laughs> but outside of that, I wish I, I wish like that'd be so great where you're at the music concert and then you just like look around at their parents like, nope. Place and then sucks. Just, <laughs> off you go. You look at him like, guess what? What? This is what? <laughs> just get out right through the gymnasium ceiling. Right. Yeah. yeah. Batman. <laughs> Yeah, that, that Get would be, you at home, dweebs. That would be the only down, downside of that. After I thought of it, I'm like, oh yeah, it's always indoors. <laughs> and you're like, I'm out of here. And then, and then you just fucking smash yourself into the ceiling and then just smash back into the floor. Explode into a ball of blood. <laughs> oh man. <Larry. laughs> That's better than sitting through a high school yeah, music concert. Arguably. Though. Yeah. Uh, all right. I misspoke earlier because I'm dumb. We're not going to, is we dumb first? We're going to the very super most important starting question. The very super most important starting question. <laughs> 
How's your eye? Now I'm worried about you. I don't think there's any more aphids in there. Okay. If I get a second aphid, I'll lose my shit. There's been two aphids that crawl around my eye. It already eyeball. laid eggs. God, there's a bunch of baby aphids in my eyeball. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Zach, let's bring it up on the screen. <laughs> Zach! God! Last <sighs> week, he made it all the way through the show without getting yelled at. True. Which I thought was great. Would you rather throw up every time you orgasm or shit every time you sneeze? <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Easy. Every time you sneeze... Throw up every time you orgasm. Boy. And here's the here's my, my first thought when I mm. read this. Is it doesn't say mm. throw up every time you orgasm to me. It says throw up, orgasm, and then keep throwing up because I can't stand the smell of throw up. Ugh. So th- for me, it's like orgasm and then five throw ups. Four okay. or five throw ups. So that's a problem. I, lo- I love that, you, that how you said that you can't stand the smell of vomit. Right. As if there's people out there who... Who like who it. love it? Mm-hmm. You know, there's some people that are like, "That's my shit." Like, <laughs> like, this, like this is like, the this is their fantasy. <laughs> They're like, "Done every." I love time. I love vomit. Me and all my friends. That's weird that Joe can't stand the smell of but it. Some, we love the smell of vomit. But some people can like see it. They and can smell fight it, off of it, and they can. I, and I, I can get in that mindset. Yeah. But if it catches me off guard, I'm gagging. Yeah. Just, <laughs> Every, probably people listening right now have it worse than me, <sighs> and they're just hearing us talk about it. And they're immediately. You ever seen, like gonna you ever seen that Stephen King movie, Stand by Me? Uh, no. Oh, classic movie. Uh, Corey Feldman, um, River Phoenix when oh, they're young. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, all that, okay. like the railroad tracks. Right, okay. And then there's that flashback scene, that, or that, that he's like, talking about this town legend where the kid at the eating contest uh, <laughs> just ate so much that he threw up. And then, and then it was immediately everybody in the crowd started throwing up and there was just vomit everywhere. That's yeah. what I, I think of whenever I think about like throwing up. Yeah, Zach. I do too. I'm glad you can hear me cl- clap in. I'm like, yeah. Oh, you think of that scene as well? <laughs> yeah, man, that ruined oh. me. It's hardcore. <laughs> but yes. I, I feel like I can taste it. <laughs> right. Ugh. Ugh. I do with the, when the kids have thrown up when they've been sick. I've had those moments where it's like you're cleaning up their puke and just, like, just yeah. fight it off. Mm-hmm. It's but, really bad. You, have you ever have your kids? Both of my kids have thrown up on my face. At one point or another, like threw up on, and not like just little baby spit up. Like they were older, like two or three, and just threw up fucking on my face. I think I've had a little bit of like milk spit up, but I don't know if I've had proper vomit like thrown up uh, on my face. I've I've had my face peed on, uh, changing a diaper. Yeah, gotta just let it rip, (laughs) just pee right in my face. Yeah, you gotta get Mm -hmm. the shield out. Yeah, Uh, tuck it, boy. I so the the problem, the the difference between these two, yeah, of course, is orgasm. uh, For the most part. You it's choose. In, yeah, sure. It's in private. Okay. And that, yes, well. You don't get to pick. And you can almost, if, unless you have some sort of, uh, yeah, I guess, disorder where you have to orgasm all the time. Right. You get to choose where you orgasm. Yep. You don't okay. always get to choose where you sneeze. Right. Which means you don't get to choose where you shit your pants. Right. Exactly. So that's that's the risk. That's there. something to, to, to factor in here. Maybe. Okay. I got <sighs> it. I got it. Man. This is it. Okay. So I'm, I will make a special, I'll bedazzle it. It'll uh-huh. be like a throw-up helmet. Ooh. It'll be nice. It'll have speakers. Mm-hmm. It'll play uh, like Marvin Gaye. Okay. It'll make me more appealing so that when I am about to orgasm and I throw up into my own mask, it doesn't like ruin the entire experience. We've talked about pony play on, on another show. <laughs> yeah. Where people dress up like pon- ponies to have sex. No, I'm, I'm just not going to ask you not. <laughs> you have to, well, I was picturing, you know, that horse thing. I don't even know what it's called because I'm not a big horse oh, guy. Oh, yeah. But they have some kind of feeder wrapped right. on their you could have that version and then if you got into pony play you could just make it part of a pony play costume i would be and a then shoe it's, in. it's yeah shoe in and then, Horse you, shoe in. And then you, you just gotta make sure you light a lot of candles to counteract <laughs> the smell of the vomit yeah. and then you're good all that being said even though you could do that i still think i would pick sneeze shit because <laughs> because you're yeah, a walking it's science suck. experiment Right, it's gonna suck, like not knowing when it's like when it's coming. But I would take lots of allergy medicine. I would have the best sinus care. I really, you know, tr- try and try and uh, I'd blow my nose a lot to yeah. try and like prevent. I'd stay away from dust. I wouldn't be walking around any dusty construction sites. Guess you could wear a diaper too. I could wear a diaper and still have proper orgasms. But no one's gonna. A lot of people m- might not have sex with you if you're wearing shitty diapers. All yeah, but I'm already <laughs> true, true. But then you clean that. But they don't have to know, you know, okay. you, you just bring like, you, you you wear diapers, but then some kind of thin diaper, but then you have like your boxers hidden in your pocket or something so right. you can like do a quick change. I just, I want to, I want to be in control of how I come. Right. That's important to me. What if you, worst of both the worlds. Okay. You are having sex. Uh-huh. Uh, you actually are into shit. So you're, ha- you're, you're having sex, you sneeze, Ugh. you shit, you turn yourself on, you come and then you throw up all over the place. Oof. Think about that. That's uh, quite a cacophony of just fucking horror. There. That's a YouTube search. 
Uh, that's a Pornhub search for sure. <laughs> what sort of crystal do you recommend for that kind of situation? <laughs> I think I think I think my wife would recommend an amethyst or maybe a, right. uh, I don't even I'm trying to I, I, amethyst is my go to because I don't know the names of the crystals. Topaz. Uh, okay. Maybe a topaz. Iron. 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 Bar. Iron. Bar. Iron. Iron. Maiden. Kristen. Thing. <laughs> Iron. Kristen. Iron. Kristen. <laughs> Iron Kristen, Iron Kristen Crystal. Right. I don't know. Uh, Thank you. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna go, but I'm still gonna go with poop my pants. Okay, mm -hmm. you're gonna go with with, with, the, with shit and sneeze. Mm -hmm. I think that might be just a. I'm gonna go with orgasm and throw up every time. Okay, because I feel like I might have more control over it. I would hate just be endlessly worried about sneezing and shitting my pants all the time. I think you just get used to it after a while. I know, you just but don't no care. One, no one else would. Okay, whatever. It's you can have life. a normal life somewhat without like coming, which would suck. But right. You're going to sneeze. You just wear a t-shirt that says like, yeah, you heard that. <laughs> yep, that happens. Can't how, control it. How explosive is the shit? Is it like spray oh. paint the wall behind you? <sighs> like, hot, boom, and both, yeah, it's power, like a dragon. Powerful. A dragon blow does from it, both sides. Does it equate to the power of the sneeze? Because some, some people have a little like, <laughs> <laughs> or some people have a, some people, and then other people have a big like, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right. You sneeze super hard to cover up the sound of splatter. No matter how hard it is, I, uh, I'm going to work diapers into my life. Okay. That's my life now. Okay. Well. Am I right or wrong? Uh, I don't know. Oh. Sorry. Is puke was the right answer? It was. I mean, okay. just this time it was anyway. All right. I don't all think right. it's going to always be that way. But right now it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. Thanks for, thanks for sending that in. I, a lot of different people, a lot of different dummies sent that one our way, so I'm not going to credit just one. Uh, but let's move on. I have, a, <laughs> I have a tale that I... Um, that I got away with something that was really stupid for a long time. Okay. And then the one time I didn't, it got it got real bad real quick. Okay. So let's move on to Is We Dumb? Is We Dumb? You grew up in Idaho. I did. Uh, I did too. You did too. We both grew up in Idaho. Both I, you, well, you know? Idaho boys. <laughs> Idaho <laughs> Joe. Well, Idaho Dan. <laughs> Idaho Spuddy. Spud boy. <laughs> uh, spud guys. And uh, down in my hometown of mm -hmm. Sun Valley, Idaho, it snowed a whole lot. And a okay. very popular thing to do when it was snowing yeah. was to do something that we would call hooky bobbing, which this means you grab onto the back of a bumper of a car <laughs> and then the car just goes and right. you are on the back and you hold on. You just basically ski on your shoes <sighs> behind a vehicle. Yeah. And we did this all the time. We would, we would be downtown and to get from like one bar to another, oh, if it man. was a little ways away, like you'd get away with grabbing onto people you didn't even know their bumpers. Just a thing. And then you, they just would take off and you just go until you had to get off okay it's like a free ride it's a dangerous cab ride right and we do it all the time and never really got hurt so this one time after snowboarding yeah at a mountain <laughs> which uh it could be the mountain's nickname could be uh break your tailbone but it's okay. actually called rotor run okay uh they'd give you shovels you'd build whatever jumps you wanted like it really was a it was a bad idea yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so i survived that uh and i did not survive the trek home oh so we are leaving and we got behind my buddy's car he had a Bronco. Not sure mm -hmm. if that matters. Okay. Um, and then, weirdly enough, my same friend from the canoe story, okay. TJ, yep, yep, yep. Uh, was with me on this adventure. Um, we decided, like, usually when you're hooky bob, you're not going super fast or, like, you're going around in a parking lot and you're doing, like, cookies and stuff. Right. So then when they turn really tight, you can let go and, like, slide out. And it's kind of fun to ski around like that. Okay, okay. In this case, we decided it'd be fun to go, like, 35 miles an hour on your feet behind the Bronco. Uh, down this like country road 35 miles an hour yeah and it was great i mean we had you know it's probably a you know three four mile drive back into town from right. the ski mountain so we jump out and we're hopping onto the back and everything's going great mm -hmm. and this is we're having a blast you're you're hiding behind you don't really feel anything it's super snowy again it's like ice you yeah, don't feel yeah. it it's not like it's super hard yeah. to hold on or anything so the last thing i remember was holding onto this bumper and seeing TJ's dumb face uh -huh. in the red light of the of the back of the Bronco. Uh -huh. And we're both just like laughing. Uh -huh, yeah. And then the next thing I remember <laughs> was waking up in his arms in the back of the car of him crying and holding me. Whoa. <laughs> he's crying and holding you? He, I'm laying down. I so wake he thinks up. you're dead? Yeah. And he's going, he's okay. He's awake. He's awake. And like we had a couple of other good buddies with us, right? Oh I'm like, oh my God. God. And I'm sitting there and I, I look at my hands. They're all covered in blood. His shirt and jacket are all covered in blood. Right. And I didn't really realize what had happened at that point. So what happened was we were going and I was laughing and I only hit a dry spot in the road. So I hit the pavement and it yanked me forward. And then I just ground off oh. the entire right half of my face. Oh, man. Just road burned down the whole side. Smashed my head. Oh. It, it, like, it, it took a chip off. 
Man. And you can push it around. You can feel oh my, God. my head. So uh, I, I I do think about this too because it, it <laughs> makes me sad. But luckily she's great and I, I love Barb. But um, a friend who wasn't with us mm -hmm. is my, my buddy Joey Sides. His okay. mom was a nurse. Okay. So they just drove me there and dropped her off and... <laughs> Dropped me off at, hers? at her house. Just plopped this fucking thing. That's like a uh, in her in her lap. That's like an old time gangster movie when they, when <laughs> exactly. they can't go to the hospital and so they got to take John Dillinger to like a fucking safe house. Yeah, I mean, and then some doctor shows up and they just do like home medicine. Right. And he has a little bag of tools. Right. <laughs> and we were, from, I mean, small town, so there was a hospital <laughs> in Haley where we were, yeah. but it's closed. Okay. So oh, like the next, oh right, you don't have twenty four hour urgent exactly. care. Exactly. No, it's a, it's a small town. So we probably would have gone there, but that's all we knew. So they called ahead. They dropped me off. If I she's not home. They were, the second plan B was the vet. Kill me. Oh, plan B was like the old vet in town. <laughs> He's an old man. He retired from veterinary practice. His needles are like he lost like it. batons. He lost his license. Something with the horse went wrong. <laughs> right. And like, so he, he's, but, always, he's always got. But he's not going to waste his horse needles. So that's what he uses on patients now. <laughs> right. I guess you know they're they're a little oh, big. They, they hurt. Man. They yeah. So parents, I went to school the next day. Uh, I felt dizzy as fuck. I scared everybody at, at school. I remember playing yeah. basketball and feeling super weird because like people were guarding me, but like I had half of a face. <sighs> and Zach, I have I have a sure picture. A this isn't this isn't of when it right right when it happened. But Zach, go ahead and bring that up. Oh wow. Okay, a little while afterwards. Yeah, a little while afterwards. But you can see where my face, like my my lips are like swollen shut. I have like the burn on <laughs> my philtrum, the space right above my lip, and uh, then yep. my chin, and then my face, <sighs> and my eye is swollen. But it was that entire part of my face was road rash. Is that TJ? Uh, no, that's Craig. Oh, okay. Hi, Craig. <laughs> He's a very happy guy. Yeah. I guess oh, the first man. place I went, like, afterwards. I was, I remember being, like, kind of, I was okay with it, but I, it felt really stupid. Oh, yeah. Like, I didn't want to go. I, I felt like I got so sick of explaining it. Sure. And, like, just reliving how dumb I am. Man, that is crazy. I'm, I'm, uh, my kids so far are not crazy daredevils, and I'm like, thank <laughs> God. Right. You just think about the things that could go wrong. It, oh, yeah. It, it is crazy to think about like when you were younger and just like, oh, if this would have just went a little more that way, mm -hmm. literally dead. Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I could have really, I, I'm lucky. I didn't have to get even like stitches or anything. Wow. For that. But it did, uh, it did, like, you could feel a floating chunk of bone that you could push around in my, oh my, my head. It felt like months. It was always there. I'd get really dizzy really easily. Yeah. Like it was, you know, it was, it was a scary little accident. I have a quick another tale okay just to jump before we go to the next thing okay uh this wasn't i didn't get hurt but you just just about how things could have gone like you know really bad had it happened slightly different right okay my senior year of uh, gonzaga we would uh w where we lived there was a trampoline at like a house maybe a couple places down okay and you know just being assholes and drunk and like, we didn't even know these people it was some students i think but we would go jump on the trampoline sometimes like two o'clock at night just coming back from a party hammered oh yeah yeah, of course. Trampoline. There. I'm, like, oh, I'm right. Go jump. I'd be right there with you. And but never like explored it during the day. And and it must have been owned by kids because of this next detail. Because no parent in the right fucking mind would put a trampoline near this. But you know, like when I grew up, trampoline was all about spiking people. Or <laughs> I think they call it double jump, double yeah, bounce, yeah, boost whatever. Boosting, boosting, yeah. yeah, just to like jump right before somebody jumps to launch them unexpectedly and hopefully send them off of the trampoline. Hopefully send their knee through their chin. Right. Exactly. That's, that's the fun part. So me and my buddy Paul doing that. I bounce him off of the trampoline. He lands on his back and. Then I just hear him go, oh shit. And then I, I go over there. <laughs> there was a piece of rebar uh, oh. coming up out of the ground that his neck was about six inches from. So he was fine. <laughs> we walked home, but it was just that thought of like, <laughs> if he would have landed six inches, eight inches off to the side, dead or paralyzed. That'd been a completely different night. Very different night. Mm -hmm. Never did that again. <laughs> uh, that'd, that'd be a really weird way to get like arrested though. Like, uh, <sighs> what is it called? Um, Nah, like un I, it's not unintentional manslaughter. Sure, it, it would have been some, maybe some yeah. kind of manslaughter. Yeah. I spiked him. Yeah, exactly. Like you would have gotten some weird trampoline charge. Dude, there, that, freak accidents like that. There I always think about that. There was a kid. I, I feel like I spin my wheel sometimes. I don't think I've told the story here, but there was a kid who grew up in New Meadows. I grew up, you know, in Riggins, and, and he was really good at basketball. So we all knew of him. And somewhere between eighth grade and high school, I mean, I didn't know him, know him, but I played against him and he was like, like he was a kid yeah. who would have went to college, you know, all that kind of stuff to, on a sports scholarship, even from a tiny town, mm -hmm. really gifted athlete. And he was good at golf too. And there was this golf course out there. And I guess he was just going down the, the trail in a golf cart, uh, horsing around golf cart fell over, happened to land on a sprinkler that went into his temple and killed him, died. <laughs> 14 years old. Jesus. And and ever since then, I was the same age. Yeah. I, I cannot, I flash on that all the time. Yeah. And just think about how like, 
one wrong turn. Little, yeah, little horseplay. So that's funny. So, uh, <laughs> hey, hey, lighthearted fun. Hey, guys, just, you're never safe. <laughs> never safe. You're never you could safe. Die. You could die at any time. Any second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sleep well. Anyway, that's our show. Anyway, we'll yay, s- we'll fun. See you next week. I'm glad you came here for escapism to get away from your troubles and have something new to fear. You're all fucking dead. Any second. <laughs> I'm done now. Okay. Uh, dumb, dumb idiots. <laughs> Dumb, 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 idiot. I went too. Uh, I went too hard on my leg there. I can't hurt myself. <laughs> yeah, that was great. That was good fun. Get like, my blood going. It's, it's good to have little reminders. <laughs> good. I, I, they can be funny. Oh, he's helping. <laughs> he's, guys, he's helping. That's just Dan helping. That's just you know. That's just the way. That's everyone has different ways of helping. <laughs> Dan helps you by by scaring the shit out of you. That's just the, that's just that's the way miracles. He's, just tra- he's trying to save lives. It's a miracle. It's a miracle. <laughs> that guy's a walking miracle. <laughs> uh, this first story is, and again, this was sent in all over the place. I happened to find it before uh, a lot of them got sent in to dumb at isbedumb.com. Oh, okay. uh, but no matter which way you slice this, you can't do whatever you want and expect everyone to accept you. That's just not how the world works. Correct. And if you expect them to, that is very ignorant. Um, so with that right. said, let's go ahead and bring up our first dumb dumb idiots for this week. Man covered with tattoos claims he lost his job as kindergarten teacher after scaring student. <laughs> now, we will, be f- we will be sure to put a photo up mm-hmm. of this gentleman on our Facebook and Instagram page. You can see <laughs> this, isn't, this isn't just like some tattoos. Right. Um, it is definitely something that you would uh, fully expect to scare a child. For horror movie fans, if you've ever seen the, the old Hellraiser movies, yeah. one of the main uh, demon characters is Pinhead. Oh, yeah. This had scared the shit out of me oh, when I was yeah, a kid. Oh, yeah, me too. It also and, confused me. Mm-hmm. I was like, why, why would anyone do that? Right, all the little nails in his head. Yeah. But, but this guy's look kind of uh, reminds me of that. And he's clearly trying to be dark and mysterious, the way he's posing. And he has his eyes. Because I, I actually um, happened to have read this same article. Oh, okay. And I got really sucked into it. And I watched this video interview. I went deep on this guy, just totally randomly. Showed up my feed the other day. Yep. And his eye, he had his eyes that was sclera or the white. But the whites of your eyes tattooed all black. And I don't care about any of that. Like, I am I have quite a few tattoos, and I know that some people don't like them on me, whatever, um, or the ones that I have. Uh-huh. Uh, you know, there's like a pentagram and Illuminati. Like, it's going to weird some people. This right. guy's so far beyond that. And he it's not about the tattoos to me. It's like, if you've watched any horror movie, right. he looks like the monster. In a, he looks demonic from like a movie. Of course, a five-year-old kid is going to be scared. Right. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. like uh, it's like asking people to, to to me like asking people like oh sh- people shouldn't worry about that and they shouldn't judge people and they shouldn't like uh, you should teach kids to accept people. Okay, then have your five year old um, watch The Conjuring <laughs> by themselves at <laughs> yeah. night and then be like, no, why are you judging that movie? Yeah, it's it's supposed to be scary and this guy is trying to look scary. Right. And then when it interferes with his work, he's mad about it. Right. You don't get to play it both ways. Exactly. And the uh, the article goes on to say, a kindergarten teacher is speaking out after he claims he lost his job due Jesus to his physical Christ. appearance, which includes tattoos all over his body and having the whites of his eyes strategically turned black. Or surgically, sorry. Uh, Silva Hilane said he was extremely disappointed to learn that <laughs> officials at Dr. Moray Elementary School <laughs> in Play Lizu a suburb of Paris, uh, that he would no longer be teaching kindergarten after parents complained that he scared their children, Reuters reported. I think the decision they took was quite sad. Elaine, 35, told the outlet following the complaint last year from the parents of a three-year-old boy whom he never taught. I'm a primary school teacher, he added. I love my job. And that's fine. That's fine. And you know, I'm glad that you love your job. And pe- teachers don't get enough credit. Somebody's going to listen to this, probably multiple people, and be like, oh, you guys just, you know, judgy or whatever like that. Oh, no, we are and, very far from judging. And, and you can say agree to disagree. You're fucking wrong. <laughs> you haven't thought this through. Yeah. It's like, if you think it's okay for that, okay, let's take it even further. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's just, you, you, then you should be able to um, have tattoos of nothing but hardcore butt fucking. <laughs> Dicks and asses coming back out of asses, coming on people's faces, <laughs> like like really graphic really sex stuff. Really go for it, right. And then go teach Sunday school to, mm-hmm. to four and five year olds. Is and that be like, okay? What? Why are these kids? It's it's not that okay. If you want to do that, fine. But now you are pushing um, your beliefs on people who may not be ready to talk about those things yet. Right, kids, and, and that kid was three years old. I saw in that. And uh-huh. if you think like, yeah, it's okay. He's not doing. He's not doing like the dick stuff. He just you know kind of looks you know like uh, whatever darker tattoos. Okay, let's take it even further. 
then you should be able to teach kindergarten and you should change your name to Satan. <laughs> and, and I don't even believe in Satan the same way people, but it's like, okay. but, but it's like, it's not like I'm some big religious person, but you should be able to change your name to Satan, cosplay a devil outfit. Uh-huh. You should be able to speak in a demonic, scary voice. Yes. Right? Because it's just the way you talk. Right. And it's just like some outfits. You it's leave, just the way you're expressing yourself. And you just welcome, you open kindergarten like, welcome to kindergarten children. I am the dark Lord. Today we'll be working on coloring. <laughs> Get out your coloring books. Hail Satan! You know, it's like, and people are like, oh, this is religious freedom. It's, uh, <laughs> if, if we're going to get rid of that rule and pretend we're not going to be judgy, then let's all fuck in the streets. Right. right. And and just fight uh-huh. whatever we want to do. Uh-huh. If, if, as long as it's consensual, I want to just um, be on the street and I'm just going to jerk off on crosswalks. Why not? Now, hey. Oh, you don't want oh, to talk to your kids about sex. Well, I want to jerk off at the fucking crosswalk right. with a butt plug. Right? I'm going to go and I'm gonna, and a horse mask. You're going to jerk off with the butt plug or mm-hmm. with a butt a little, plug in? A, 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 with a butt plug in. Oh. And a little horsey stick. Okay. And I want to walk. I want to I wanna ride back and forth on the cross. Like, me! Me! Danny! <laughs> and, then, and, then just, and then just come. Danny, you're good boy. Right? Because that's that's how I like to live my life. Right. That's my freedom. Right. Like if you're going to be I want no uh, consequences. like a motivational speaker and you look right. like our friend here. Right. Like don't be upset when the school's like, don't hire you. <laughs> right like you can't be like i am all for it yeah. i don't care that yeah. this is what you're doing i don't care not even close it does not bother me whatsoever nope. but when you're a teacher you can't be mad when you're not accepted huh. right like exactly. it's such a, a it's to me it's like yeah of course I, like I w- you've just chosen you can have any yep. other a lot of other professions doing mm-hmm. this i would go to that guy for tattoos he, he actually has beautiful work on him yeah what is uh would not hire him when my kids were younger to be saturday night babysitter what why not Hey guys, this guy over here. Hey, Satan's here. And you know what? And, e- and even then, the way I talk with my kids, I could I could probably be like, "Look, he's a great dude," mm-hmm. and I would have those talks. Right. But even then, I wouldn't be upset if somebody else didn't want to hire him because I'm like, you got to take responsibility for your choices. Right. You know, and it's like I even think about that with what I not the world has changed. I don't have like that many, but um, uh, I'm trying to even think of like uh, if there were certain jobs, you know, like in a very conservative town where I know it's conservative. And uh, I want to get a job, at customer service, or investing, or like something like right. that. Right, yeah, where you're going right, to be exactly. working with somebody. It's just an unrealistic <laughs> view of the world. It is because Extremely. you have your beliefs; other people have theirs. If I lived in a very Christian conservative town and I wanted to be a financial planner, I'm not going to get suck dick fuck six 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 tattooed mm-hmm. on the side of my face mm-hmm. and expect and be like, I don't know why anyone's not showing up. Business is real bad right now. <laughs> this is in the pooper. <laughs> What? Why? Why? Because I don't think shit through. I just love the idea of somebody telling me they're a really nice guy with a mm-hmm. hard dick down the side of their face. <laughs> I'd be like, I, okay. <laughs> I'm sure you are. I don't know. What he you might are. be. He might maybe. He yeah. might be great. And mm-hmm. I'm not going to judge him. He, he just might be made super nice, but he also has a hard dick choice. tattooed on his face. Right. At one point, he made a questionable decision. <laughs> he just happened to have his memorialized on his face. Right. right. Uh, all right. Well, one dumb, dumb idiot down. Let's move it on. We have our second dumb, dumb idiot that we're going to explore right now. And this is more of like a a group of people. Um, and what, what leads us here is just how <laughs> disgusting this is. So police confiscate 345,000 recycled condoms in Vietnam. Can you even imagine, what? What, first of all, doing this, and then next of all, walking in on Cleaned this? Cleaned and resold. Yes. Police in Vietnam have confiscated an estimated 345,000 used condoms, which have been cleaned and resold as new State media reported footage by state-owned Vietnam television uh, station, the VTV, this week showed dozens of large bags containing the used contraceptives scattered across the floor of a warehouse in the southern province of Ben Yung. Police say the bags weighed like 794 pounds, equivalent to around 345,000 condoms, according to VTV. What? The owner of the warehouse said they had received a monthly input of used condoms from an unknown person. (laughs) <laughs> which just that that phrase alone right from an unknown person <laughs> like, I, it tips you off <laughs> if the whole concept of your business plan was washing condoms and right. reselling them if you don't know where they're coming from that makes it a lot worse than just washing condoms and reusing them there's so many things wrong with this <laughs> there's so many things i mean first off Whoever's washing the condoms, mm-hmm. I mean, the chances of like picking up something I think are probably pretty small. Right. You know, some kind of SD, just the way it's transferred. Right. Well, they, they do say that they were boiled in water, then they were drained and then reshaped on a wooden phallus before being repackaged and resold. Oh, so that, to make sure that there's no holes. How is that, co- how is that cost effective? That's a lot of work. That's a lot of how work. How much these condoms being sold for? Uh, well, the, the, the lady who got caught, part of it, that said they dropped them off, she was paid 17 cents for, like, for uh. every kilogram of recycled condoms she produced. 
Uh, neither she nor the owner of the warehouse were available for comment at this time. I bet they fucking were. I'm so curious about this one lady. Where she? Where, how is she getting access to this many condoms? Life, life has gone real bad. At that point, I mean, if, if, you, if, if you, you work you... at a whorehouse or a brothel, <laughs> and you're just cleaning, just <laughs> that many going around, just like picking them up, squeezing the part the... of me. Part of me really admires the work ethic, because a lot of people are like, "I'm just having trouble getting ahead," whatever. Like that. I've been there, and it's like uh, this lady obviously mm-hmm. was not, like, "You're not, you're not in a, your ideal financial place when you even consider." What if I just wash these condoms? I'm going to explore some and, other options. Explore some other, <laughs> but, but, but then if you do that and you do make a lot of money, I got to say, I really admire that. Okay. The, yeah, the, the, work the gusto mm-hmm. to do the job that nobody else wanted to do it, well, to find that niche. But yeah, it's a job that shouldn't exist. It's a job that sh- probably shouldn't <laughs> exist. But then I'm, I am. I'm, now you're, now you're an entrepreneur. You're recreating. <sighs> You're creating an industry that has yet to exist. I'm just worried about effectiveness because in my, I, I doubt these condoms were designed to be reused. Probably not. Condoms are like one of the quintessential like one use items. Yeah. I mean, I, they I used to be. I keep some around and I use them multiple times. <laughs> I mean, in, in the old days when it was like it was literally like sheepskin. Ooh. You were supposed I've, to like wash them out and reuse those, them, kind of like a fleshlight. Yeah, those were the good old days for sure. <laughs> in the good old days when you had a quarter inch thick <laughs> piece of sheep intestine, <laughs> just that tin, you tin kind, foil that kind of fit your dick, <laughs> that you then washed in an old timey sink afterwards, <laughs> <laughs> and talk uh, to yourself about how how, how much good you you're doing in life. life and how much gold <laughs> you're going to find tomorrow. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you got done taking your pickaxe to the mine <laughs> yeah. and you went to the saloon slash brothel and you took your trusty sheepskin condom that your dad passed down to you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I picture him. Guy goes to the saloon, gets hammered drunk. And I was, he's like, good night, Gary. Walks over to the coat rack and takes his little reusable condom off. <laughs> Mind if I use this tonight? Nah, I just wash it, bring it back tomorrow. He grabs his old timey prospector hat <laughs> with like a little like place for like a light yeah. kind of thing on it. Or, you know, and then he takes that and he's got his old timey like plaid kind of jacket. I just uh-huh. picture all these items. And then, uh-huh. and then there's one, the last hook is the <laughs> sheepskin condom. <laughs> Like like snap, it's like a I don't even know like you know those like those elastic. tension belts that you have to work out with mm-hmm. like after you get hurt you have to wrap around your leg and stretch your ankle out <laughs> right. whatever those are called like that type of material. Uh, but I man, I'm torn. I'm torn actually on this one because it does it's seem very, dumb. It's it does very seem dumb. irresponsible. It's very irresponsible. But it's a weird mix of being very responsible and irresponsible. It's responsible to the environment, <laughs> okay, irresponsible yeah. to whoever has to use the recycled condom. Yes. Because the effectiveness rate has to be less. Right. Has to be an increased chance they break. What can they do with the condoms like to recycle them besides just like reusing them? Can they just melt them into another thing? I can latex oh, be melted God. down? I guess I, I guess it can. I Made mean, into children's toys? Oh Come my on. God. Don't say that. But it could be. I mean, it wouldn't be. They don't know. I mean, <laughs> whatever. If it, no one's getting hurt, if it, nothing that wrong it works, with it. it works. <laughs> Why is this one all ringed out? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, it looks like this thing feels like someone else got to it first. <laughs> why is there? Why is there weird ribbing on Ken's face? <laughs> why is the ribbing on the doll? inside? I think it's inside out <laughs> condom. They just packed it the wrong way. <laughs> why they boiled this... it, didn't straighten it out quite, and it's like this janky ass <sighs> Charlie Brown Christmas tree type condom. Why does this doll glow in the dark and smell like strawberries? <laughs> right. Oh, it's a different kind of condom. Right. Forget about it. <laughs> okay, I'll pick it up next time. Uh, anyway, so uh, both, both of these uh, okay. definitely not the dumbest thing I found this week. Um, but before we move on, yeah. what, is there something that you would consider never reusing? Like, is there something I, I know that I have shared my toothbrush with my wife? I don't even like doing that because I feel mm-hmm. like it's super, it's just super yeah. weird. Uh, I mean, to reuse, I mean, condoms has to top the list, right? Condoms top the list. I, I like to buy new underwear. Call me crazy. <laughs> okay. I don't Every like, single I, time. I don't know, but I JK. wouldn't want to, I wouldn't, wanna, I wouldn't want to have somebody else's used underwear. Okay. Right. So like shoe, I mean, shoes. So like all, what my point of, of all of this yeah. is, those are all bad. Condoms right. is next level. Next level. Like for, if you put it in that perspective yeah. of things that are reused. I have very thin recyclable poop bags for the dogs. Oh, yeah. Those should be good condoms. That It could be condoms. That would be silly to me to wash out, to oh. wash the poop off. To re- But even then, it's not as bad because, con- because again, it's not the pregnancy risk. You're right. That's the worst. Okay. Done. Okay. <laughs> are you I, ready to get mad? I am. Okay. Apocalypse pending. It's the apocalypse. Now, as we hinted towards with our first story with the kindergarten teacher. Yeah. With all the tattoos. Yeah. We are very open. We try yeah. to be very understanding. Mm-hmm. Um, like, guys, he seemed like a nice guy, by the way. Sure. Just wrong job. Right. I. No matter. But no matter what, I could not. Mm-hmm. I could not wrap my my head around uh, the dumbest thing that I was able to find this week. Okay. Uh, Zach, go ahead and bring it up on the screen here. 
People are turning disabled by their own choice and calling themselves transabled. Yep, that's super dumb. <laughs> Just right out the gate. Right out the gate. What do you think about that? Super dumb. Uh, so there's been an uptake in the past few years of people identifying as transabled. If you're not quite sure what that means, here's the definition. Transabled refers to people who choose to be disabled and often perform illegal surgeries and medical procedures to find happiness. The transabled, uh, you know, liken their identity to their transgender people and feel one or more limbs of their functions of one body do not belong to oneself. According to Professor Alexandre Boril, a feminist, gender, and sexual studies professor uh, and fellow trans, uh, transibility is the desire or the need for a person identified as tra uh, able-bodied by other people to transform his or her body to obtain a physical impairment. Now, it goes on to talk about this one lady, and there are a couple in this article, but one such person mm -hmm. is North Carolina resident Jewel Shupping, who convinced a sympathetic psychologist to pour drain cleaner into her eyes so she could live as a blind person. They both should have gotten in trouble for that. I know. My mother would find me walking into the halls at night when I was three or four years old, she said, speaking to the Daily Mail about her fascination with blindness. Mm -hmm. By the time I was six, I remember that thinking about being blind made me feel comfortable. She began to wear thick black sunglasses and got her first cane at the age of 18. Uh, okay. By age 20, she was fully fluent in Braille. Like, just definitely sympathizing. And, the, the, and then it goes on and talks about another one who... Um, is Chloe Jennings, oh, or, or, sorry, Chloe Jennings White also made news a few years ago for wanting to be permanently paralyzed. Jennings White also lives with BIID and tried to paralyze herself at the age of nine by riding her bike off of the stage, but ended up with scrapes and bruises. Doing any activity that brings a chance of me becoming paraplegic gives me a sense of relief from the anxiety caused by the BIID. You know, we're just going to go ahead and pause right there. We talked about this uh, on Time Suck a little bit with bizarre mental disorders. Yes, I, there, I, I recall. There is that thing there. So part of me thinks like, okay, clearly, in my opinion, you are for sure mentally ill. Sure. When you, when you have these desires. Right. Uh, so that you can't help any more than you could help being born disabled. Like the phantom, la or phantom limb mm -hmm, syndrome we mm -hmm. kind of talked about uh, where they, they hated it and they wanted to chop right, it up. They had like right. a never-ending want to chop their leg off. But just in the same sense that it's wrong to give into a voice that you can't help having as a paranoid schizophrenic and kill right. somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's say somebody, uh, you know, you have a voice, which has happened. Uh, I think about the vampire of Sacramento, right. which we talked about, this guy, Richard Chase. He couldn't help having voices in his head still wrong when he, you know, uh, fucking cut up a baby. Right, exactly. You know, and it's yeah. like this, it's like, okay, you can't help having those desires in my opinion, still wrong to go through with it because that's something you can't take back. Mm -hmm. And just like it's wrong to maim another, I think in this sense, it's wrong to maim yourself. And then what? And now the state has to pay for you. Uh, you get to, you get, you get to park in the disabled right. place, all that kind of stuff, right. even though you didn't need to be, it mm -hmm. was a choice. That psychologist who poured bleach, that person, I hope they lost their fucking license mm -hmm. because th they assaulted somebody. And to me, that's no different than like, uh, let's say again, you had a parent schizophrenic who uh, thought the devil was inside of him and wanted it cut out. Right. And then as a psychologist, you get out your knife and you just start carving into their chest. Uh -huh. And then you're like, no, but they asked for it. Yeah, because they're fucking sick. Uh -huh. And this this article doesn't talk about it, but there are, uh, it does go on to, because I looked into it, you know, further to right. kind of figure out if I want to even bring it onto the show because of this exact angle. Yeah. But there are... Uh, people that they want like the full treatment. They want like the state benefits. They want like the services, right? Yeah. They want someone to help take care of them. And that's where the fucking line is. Right. It's like you're taking away from people that like are right. Have a have a true disability, mm -hmm. uh, whatever that may be, born with or uh, you know involved in an accident of some sort, and you want to be there and right. you want to get those services and take you know taxpayer or state funds to to deal with that. And that makes it yeah to right right there that makes it dumb to me. And I just look at like where you know you think about like civilization. Civilization forms based on some rules. And if you don't have any rules then it's just complete anarchy. Right. And we don't get to have nice things. Yeah. And with something like this, you know, you can talk about like, well, it's their right. You know, some people get really mad if you shame any desire to like, you know, dis, uh, disfigure yourself in any way. Like I think about this one lady who had a bunch of surgeries to become like a cat and then got a lot of health problems right. because your body isn't meant to be carved up that way. And some, and some people are like, well, you know, what's the big deal? She had her face modified and all these implants and these, uh, you know, various implants to have the ridges of like an animal or to look like this thing. It's like, okay. Sure, I guess you can do that, but then nobody else should have to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And if you get sick because you did that, 
well, then you're fucking shit out of luck because <laughs> you, it's was, so unnecessary. Right. It's so <laughs> unnecessary. Yeah. And, 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 and I just don't buy it. I don't, I don't personally believe, I would love to see a longitudinal study when these people talk about like, I needed to be blind and then I could feel happy. Uh, 10 years, 20 years down the road, are you still happy? Sure. Are you still happy? Because what's fucked about this is if you're like, oh shit, I actually had some other things going on. And I should have just went to a counselor and gotten on the right medicine and, not and worked through it and not drained my fucking eyeballs because uh-huh. you can't take that back. Uh-huh. Ah, this is that's absurd. Uh, absurd. There, there's one last line here. Um, I would not support my kids right. doing that on any level. If they're like, Dad, but I identify as somebody who doesn't have legs and arms. Right. Well, I identify as somebody who's not going to fucking take care of you once you cut your limbs off. Right, right. And uh, Chloe, the last one, the last line of a quote that, that I'm just going to bring up here, um, it says that she now spends most of her time in a wheelchair unless she has got out for certain household tasks. So she's getting out of her wheelchair. So this person's just faking it. Okay. That, I just wanted to put that out there. Or to get to her car, she admits that her fantasy is to be involved in a devastating car crash where oh nobody else is harmed. Oh my God! But both legs are hurt beyond repair. Anyway, let's just move on, shall we? That's absurd. <laughs> Let's move on. Okay. Okay, we're going to go to One Star Heroes. I get no respect in real life. I always am upset. So I let them know I hate them on the internet. Yeah. yeah. Hi, Dan. Hi. I, you know, I get I get mad already. I am I know. I'll, I'll transition. <laughs> Are you okay? I anticipate people being like, hey, you know, well, it's not your place. Fuck. Shut up. It is. <laughs> Because pe- I, people who act like you should just never judge, you're being ridiculous. Yeah, you're living in a fantasy Society world. Society collapses mm-hmm. if we stop judging on any level. Right. Judgment is what creates laws. Mm-hmm. Judgment is w- what creates, you know, like, uh, kind of like unwritten rules, written rules for us to live by. If everybody stops judging, then everything should be legal. Everything's on the table. Oh, what, you're mad somebody molested your kid? Why, you fucking pretty judgy. Right. <laughs> that was what they like to do. Ooh, look at you. Oh, you don't like that someone cut your mom up with a knife? Well, okay, fucking judgy. They enjoy cutting people up with knives. Let them let be happy. That's what makes them happy inside. Right. Okay, let's let's focus anger differently. <laughs> I, I, I knew better. Oh, to bring no. That in. no, it's good. No, it's good. <laughs> I've, I've seen red now. Okay. This, uh... Those are the aphids. Those are the aphids. These more... Like, there's red aphids. There's a red aphids. There's, there's a rage aphids. <laughs> the, rage. <laughs> the, the, the covenant. Okay. The highly sought after rage aphid. I, I've been missing movie theaters Oh, yeah, for me a while. too. Mm-hmm. And, and Regal, actually, the Riverstone one, opened up in uh, Coeur d'Alene a while back. It did, yeah. It's been it's, here at least the whole time I've been here. Mm-hmm. And it just, you know, and it finally kind of came back from COVID. Very limited, of course, you know. And it just makes me sad. I, Lindsay and I, one of our favorite things to do, one of our first kind of date experiences was uh-huh. movies. Yeah. We love going out to the movies. Yeah, almost like every other weekend. It felt like me and the kids, I would try to take them to a movie. Yeah, I love like, just it. pumped that they got old mm-hmm. enough that I could do that yeah. uh, by myself. Right, right. And, and not be scared or know that I'm going to have to leave halfway through. Yes. And, okay. and, 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 and if you've listened to my stand-up, you know that I do have an anger towards people who uh, don't be quiet in the movies. Yeah. And I did work. There was a couple years where I had to stop going because I let that anger overtake me. You killed somebody. And I wanted. I, I started yelling at people <laughs> in the movie theater, like screaming at people. Okay. Like literally uh, screaming, shut the fuck up to strangers. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I had to calm down. So I took a break. A little movie break. I took a movie break for okay. a couple of years. And then I'm back. All right. And I enjoyed the experience. And I this Regal Riverstone, um, it's a very nice theater. Yeah. I think it's I think it's I've been to a lot of theaters, uh, literally on different continents all over the country. So I feel like I I know something about a, a good theater compared to a bad theater. I think they do a great job. Yeah, like a new Regal mm-hmm. or a new AMC. Like that yeah. is what like what you can expect mm-hmm. from this this local movie theater for us. I've probably been here 20, 30 times over the last four or five years. Never had a bad experience. Right. You know, it's high school kids working there. Of course it is. That's every almost every movie theater in my mind. A lot of the kids. Yeah. So are they going to be, in some instances, a little slow to get this or a little confused? Yeah, they're 16. Right. I, I expect that. Yeah. I, uh, so Could be their first job. Yeah, it could be the first job. Probably right. is. Three out of five stars is what it gets overall, which I'm already kind of like, ah, oh, that's not fair. Okay. And then, I, and then I, found, I found the one stars, and these people are absurd. This is, again, a place very familiar with. Mrs. W. Oh, boy. One star, standing in line to get a ticket at the snack bar, now required, is inane. I think she meant insane. (laughs) Probably. (laughs) Too few employees. Forget trying to buy a soda and popcorn. They're trying to force online sales, but if you buy the tickets online instead, it takes well over 30 minutes to get a lousy bucket of popcorn. Stay home. You should stay home. You 100% should stay home, I've, I've, Miss Dub. I've been there so many times. I've been there when it's packed, uh-huh. when the line goes past where it ends, when uh, the little kind of like line dividers they set the out. The little velvet rope thing? Yeah, the little, the little oh, yeah, rope yeah, situation, you. Yeah, yeah. you know? Uh, similar to the velvet, the right. same system. Right. 
I've been there when it's super packed, never close. That's a huge exaggeration. 30 is a long never, time. Never, ever. I mean, 10 minutes can feel like 30. Right. Especially and when I you think, just want to go sit down and watch a movie. So to me, yeah. the, to me, this one star is all about you had unfair expectations of your experience. Mm-hmm. Okay, you go to a popular movie on like a Friday night. Yeah, it's going to take a second because you're fucking popcorn lady. Because <laughs> a lot of people go right. to movies. Right, exactly. <laughs> so that's the least, that's the least known. We're going we're gonna to build up. Okay. <laughs> Corey S. Now. All right. <laughs> I purchased my, one star, of course, I purchased my ticket from a rude, unfriendly woman at the front and waited outside the door of the theater I was to go in. Okay. I was out of the way of foot traffic and any entrances, quietly waiting for my mother when a very rude employee demanded I go away. That never happened. Can you imagine? That never happened. You're just sitting go there. Go away. You're sitting there like standing by the <laughs> drinking fountain and some person walks up and goes, Psst, go, go away. away. <laughs> It never happened. Uh, okay. Okay. But I would for sure go away because I would be so confused. I'd, I'd be so confused. I'd laugh like, yeah, okay, no, you're right. I should go This away. is such a lie. <laughs> go away. They're so relaxed there. I've wanted the uh, attendants to, to come in something. and yell at people for being too loud. Uh-huh. That's actually what sent me to my spiral for a while where it's like I was screaming at people because I'm like, none of the attendants were doing anything to shut them the up. The ushers weren't. The ushers, exactly. Yeah, weren't, weren't shushing. My experience in movie theaters, almost, there's one in LA. Um, oh, the damn it. It's a local chain, Arclight. They're, very, they're on it and I love it. They don't put up with shit. Right. You start talking to the movie theater, they will have an usher come and shush you. And that's and it's a, that's, beautiful. That's an adult theater. That's so, an adult theater. That's, that's a jerk off theater. <laughs> you're supposed to quietly jerk off and you don't say things. Quit moaning. And, and there's ushers all around as you're jerking <laughs> off who are very militant. And if you're like, oh man, we're like, shh, stop it. And then you're like, oh, sorry. Spank it. Shut up. <laughs> Spank it. Shut up. No, but it's, a, it's in a nice, like, uh, uh, kind of where they do like screenings and stuff. But anyway, okay. this place, no, no way. Yeah, and then no you, way. And then you just real, read the rest. It's ridiculous enough that one person has to pay about $20 for a movie and popcorn. I don't need arbitrarily rude employees telling me I can't wait for my mother. Just go to Hayden Discount. Employees are often nicer there. Even no. though I'm often. Often. Uh, you have problems with people all the time. And guess what? Uh, who is this person? Um, doesn't doesn't say. Oh, my. It's anonymous. Anon- oh, you know, it's because I, I, I went to their... Th- Corey oh, it's S. still Corey. Fucking Corey. Corey S. You know what? It's you. You're the problem. You're the problem for sure. Okay, here's here's my favorite. Go away. Go away. Go away. <laughs> That's, that, I would love like to see that. Like a three-year-old would say to me. And I love that they're like, be, they're, they paint this picture. They're being quiet. It's just, they're waiting out of the way. And then just this random employee goes, go away. <laughs> go on, get out of here. <laughs> go get. We don't want your kind here Shh, at our theater. What, you waiting for your mom? Not on my watch. No one waits for their moms when I'm in, on the clock. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they call me Johnny fuck you and fuck your mom. <laughs> Thompson. Johnny No Moms. <laughs> Johnny Moms. No way. There's no way. <laughs> okay. So, Jamie W. here. All right. Just out the gate. One star. Just the attitude. Really? Really? I have to select my seats before purchasing tickets. Now, what is this? A concert? <laughs> <laughs> Give me a break. I want to be able to select my seat when I enter the theater. And not only that. Why aren't the lights dim for the previews? They are. That's part of the whole experience done, all caps, with this shit theater. Oh, wow. That is outrageous. Oh, Jamie. And uh, and, and I will add that mm-hmm. when that change was made, it confused me. To select your seats? Because I didn't know. Oh. When I first went, I was like, wait. I was like, why do right. I? And then, and and then, then you adapt. But then I just adapt. Because yep. no one likes change. So like, at first mm-hmm. I was like, oh, I, just, okay. I wish I could have. Oh, man. Like, so I guess don't go pick my seats anymore. Yeah. And then guess what? I was fucking over it. And right. the next time I went, I knew the procedure. And so I would go online and I would pick my seats. Yep. Like, exactly. That's, that's what I would do. Exactly. And it's better. It's all, all done. It's better. Yeah. Because now if you plan it all, if you go last minute, okay, but that's, again, it goes back to ridiculous expectations. Mm-hmm. This this reminds me of somebody, they're going to a nice restaurant that does reservations, they're packed, they show up, they don't bother to do shit on their end, mm-hmm. it's packed when they get there, oh, come on, that table's open, <laughs> you can't let me sit there. Sir, we have a reservation, that table's reserved for two, <laughs> yeah, but I don't see them, and but- then they go on yell, bah, 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 bah. <laughs> you're the problem. Right. 100%. So I looked further into this Jamie W. Oh, Jamie's going to have some good ones. Uh, Blue Sky Bagels. This oh, place, boy. one star. Okay. Boise. Huh? This I've, place, been, I've been there, I think, you? actually. Yeah. This place used to be delicious. It has fallen far from a good standard. My bagel today was missing several ordered components, and the cream cheese looked and tasted like mayonnaise. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. What kind of components would you like on your bagel? <laughs> <laughs> I know who talks like that. Uh, I'd like a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> like it's an Apache helicopter or something. Right, right, exactly. exactly. 
<laughs> the avocado spread was brown and tasted old. Whatever. Ha- this is my favorite. Whatever happened to fresh avoca- avocado? Whatever happened Where'd to this? Where'd they all go? He goes on and on, grossed out and disappointed. Okay. So that's another one. And then this is the finale. Okay, fine. He goes to Junkyard Bistro in Sam, Sam and Idaho. Oh. Just a warning. If you happen to find flies in your food here, you will be treated with complete disrespect and contempt for pointing it out. I get it. Flies happen. <laughs> but to make your paying guests feel at fault for that occurrence is pretty ridiculous. No apology, not even a conversation. Our server, as well as the other staff, were blatantly put off by our complaint. And we were the ones trying to laugh it off. <laughs> oh, well, I guess being a born and raised Idahoan isn't enough to get respect from a salmon local. Shame, too. The soup was tasty, minus that damn fly. <laughs> I fucking hate this person so much. I, I, uh, you've been to Salmon, right? I was born I in Salmon. I never have, actually. I was born it, in Salmon. It's in that weird location. I don't think I've yeah. ever been to Salmon. Yeah, Little town, though. Like, yeah. what, a thousand people? Tiny. tiny. Super tiny. I, I'm not sure if I brought this up before, but so small yeah. that me and my brother uh-huh. were both born in Salmon, Idaho. Okay. And our social security numbers are like five off from each other. Oh, my God. And they were hilarious. three years apart. That's hilarious. So between that time- Not many babies. Not many babies coming out of Salmon, <laughs> salmon Regional Hospital. And I, and I just love this thing where it's like- the fly happened after the food was served. So right. Like, it, like, okay, you're sitting there. They didn't put it in there. No, they didn't fucking throw it in there. So a fly happened. That's like getting mad about your own eyelash falls into your, and you're like, I'd like a, I'd like a refund. Oh, man. The eyelash. My, my hair. Yours. My own hair is in my sandwich. My own. I spilled my food on the floor myself and would like a full refund. Oh, my, my socks in my salad. Oh, oh, <laughs> man. I accidentally poured my soup into my pants instead of my mouth. We tried to laugh it off. I tried to laugh it off, but the employee was very unhelpful. <laughs> oh, man, instead of eating my burger, I took it and threw it into the fucking wall because I'm a piece of shit. And I would like a full refund. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm, I am, I'm excited for the day yeah. that I will go through like a drive through menu mm-hmm. and I will see on the menu a list of components. <laughs> That I'll be able to hey, put uh, on my hamburger. Yeah, I see your condiments here, but where are your components? <laughs> where are your components? What, what do you mean? Oh, you know, like the cheese, the lettuce, onions. Do you guys have mayonnaise flavored cream cheese? <laughs> right. Because like, I acquired a taste for it after having it at that bagel spot. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm going to need a, uh, you know, what do you got? got a motherboard. Uh, we're going to need a seatbelt. <laughs> uh, some hexagon screws. <laughs> uh, five of them. Are, that's, it. that's all the components I need. Thank you. <laughs> so that's it. That's great. Oh, okay, good. That's great. I, I, I do have one complaint oh. about the Regal. This what? one right here, oh, right here in our really? town. Yeah. And this was goes back to a time that I was there um, with my kids by myself a couple years ago. And my son, Ezra, who okay. already, you know, he's high functioning mm-hmm. autistic. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think I mentioned that, but yeah. I, don't, I don't mention it no, enough. No, it's good to preface that, it. Right, yeah. right. So uh, he gets real set off by like tiny little things anyway. Uh-huh. Um, so we, I get him to go to the bathroom and he goes to the bathroom and I'm washing my hands mm-hmm. and he reaches over and he flushes the toilet. And the handle just fucking exploded <laughs> off of it. Yeah. And the water just like starts flooding the bathroom. And I'm laughing. Right. But then Ezra's pissed. Like he's not, he's not like, scared. Right. He, he goes yeah, from like t- scared. About how he's and really now angry. he's like mad. And then I'm laughing. Right. But but he, like, so now I'm not taking it as serious as I'm supposed to be. Uh-huh. I'm like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We'll get somebody to put it back on. So now he's crying. And now I got this kid who's, you know, autistic, throwing a yeah. raging fit, like punching me while I'm laughing. And then, like, I'm trying to explain, like, what happened to this guy. Um, so did the employees get after you guys? We just went back into the movie. No, they didn't so get didn't mad get in at trouble. Us. No. So really... We just said, hey, man, your fucking toilet exploded. So like, your family deserves a one star. Right. Not the place. <laughs> exactly. Because you have said that your son has Hulk strength. He does have so Hulk your, strength. So your Hulk strength son broke the toilet, got mad about it. <laughs> right. And you guys didn't pay for shit. Did I mention that he elbow dropped it? <laughs> That's how he flushed it? <laughs> I mentioned that he karate kicked it seven times. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't mention that. And then I gave, and I went on Yelp afterwards and gave them a one star review for not having karate proof toilets. <laughs> what kind of theater is this? He just pee in, and then he, he just he pulls up his pants and just just right from the from the top rope, just woo, <laughs> <laughs> elbow through the flusher. That's and amazing. And I'm cheering him on. Go, buddy, break it, break it. <laughs> and then he got up without paying anything. So the, so your real only complaint against Regal is that they don't have karate proof toilets. That's exactly right. That's fair. That's number one. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, we've looked at a bunch of dumb stuff. Let's turn it around and do the do the good part of the good. show. Okay, good. This is Sliver of Hope. Sliver of Hope. Just real, real fast, about five minutes ago, I had an aphid fly in front of my face. How? I think there was another one hiding in my hair. <laughs> 
I'm an aphid magnet. Just like under your mustache. That's just waiting for the right moment. There's probably a, several in my mustache right now. I can see them. <laughs> they're laying eggs right now. Oh, God. They're, they're high-fiving uh, in your mustache. Uh, 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 all right. So this is a story that came across uh, uh, this sometime this week. It might have been, actually, I think it was the end of last week, if, okay. I'm, if I'm being honest here. And it says, a Thai national park sends rubbish back to tourists, which I oh, thought hilarious. so funny. So if you litter in this Thai national park, your rubbish may you? just come back to haunt you because you have to reg- register oh. for the spots. Oh, yes. got it, got so, it, got it. So, well, not exactly haunt, but, but <laughs> it'll be shipped to your home as a pointed reminder that when you're out in nature, you had better clean up after yourself. Oh, my God. Authorities great. in the popular, uh, what is that? Hao Yai National Park near Bangkok mm-hmm. will start sending rubbish back to litterers, Thailand's environmental minister said. Offenders will also be registered with the police. Visitors to the park have <laughs> registered with their addresses, making it easy for rangers to track them down if they leave rubbish behind. Environmental minister, name I don't have a chance of pronouncing, posted pictures of litter collected on cardboard parcels ready to be shipped on his Facebook account. He goes, your trash <laughs> will be sent back to you. The post warns, reminding people that littering in a national park is an offense and punishable with up to five years in prison and hefty fines, uh, along with empty plastic bottles, cans, and chip wrappings. The box in the Facebook post contains a polite note saying, you forgot these things. <laughs> That's <laughs> so great. National Park. That's so great because yeah. I, I do like hate it so much, especially growing up in a real rural place mm-hmm. where it's like you hike in or whatever, you make it to some pristine creek or lake or whatever. Right. And then, you know, where you're going to sit down to fish, because as you know, I'm, I'm an avid fisherman. Oh, yeah, and big time. Where you, where you bring uh, your sophisticated tackle and you have different rods. The rods, components. Mm-hmm. You've tested the weather. Yeah, your you, bag of gas. You fit your fish finder, your bag of gas. <laughs> <laughs> and but no, but like, but you go to do some fishing, and then there's you know like a, a bag of Cheetos, oh yeah, half thrown, and some other wrappers, and you know five kind of crunched up you know Mountain Dew cans, mm-hmm. and I'm like, you piece of shit. Yeah, that's just lazy and selfish. I, I, we've been on. I've been on boats before where yeah. like something will fly off. And we'll turn the fuck That's around awesome, and yeah. go get it. Oh, have you ever been driving behind somebody? Yeah. And they just throw shit out their window? Yeah. I, it drives me of, insane. Just, just one time, I want to see that person drive off the road after that. <laughs> I want to see them go to throw something out the window, and then that causes their laxing concentration, and they go right off the bank. <laughs> they throw the, and then the door opens with them, and they oh. just end up throwing themselves out. Like and a little, just, a hefty, so, fancy, nice, oh my like, God. brisk toss of themselves some out Some McDonald's the... wrappers and like a, like a coffee cup and then just, Him. just, and then just human, that person right? just rolling down the road. <laughs> I would keep driving. It's a person's friend they don't care for. Like, <laughs> right, see you right. later, trash. <laughs> uh, that did remind me of a time that I got in a road raid incident that was when, not my fault. Okay. I was driving back from, from Spokane to uh, home, to Coeur d'Alene, mm-hmm. and there was a trailer in front of me and I watched a empty, I didn't know it was empty, so thank God it was, but it was an empty like Pepsi can yeah. and it fell out and it skipped up and then it hit the corner of my upper right windshield. Oh. It went and shot off. Yep. So the person next to me thought I just grabbed the can and threw it out my window. Oh. Because it just glanced off of my windshield. Oh, or an unfortunate occurrence. And so they were honking at me and flipping me off. And the guy was like, I was like, am I, do I have a pop tire? Because right. I couldn't figure it out at why first. They're like, so why mad? are they so fucking mad at me? And then I realized it was because they thought I, 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 I was going to stop. I almost pulled over because yep, yep. I thought like something was wrong with my car because they were right. so mad at me. But then I realized it started becoming like flipping me off. And I was like, oh, they're mad at me. I was like, I didn't do anything. It's and not then my fault. It was later. I was like, oh, it was the pop can. It's the pop can. But I thought this was, I thought that was that an was amazing, nice. yeah, amazing little thing. That's don't, sweet. don't litter. Don't litter. Don't do it, you assholes. Yeah, exactly. Right. Keep, our, keep our planet nicer for us to enjoy nature. Right. Let's find some fun stuff. I like fun stuff. To you from internet. The internet has all sorts of neat things. Anything you want can be yours. Let's take a peek, together, as a couple. To you, from internet. All right, this one is very simple, but mm-hmm. it's also, it is it is so funny to me. Okay. And you also are going to get a kick out of it. Because I know that, um, like, scaring people is fun. Oh, yeah. Uh, this guy, over six years, <laughs> put together a compilation of him scaring his wife. And she scares like super easy, okay, and very funny, okay. okay. Um, so we're gonna, again, we'll post the links in the in the description, and he shared it with the world. Yeah, but if, even if you are, even if you are just listening, yeah, you're, you're going to hear some of these screams. In the face matches it. It is great. So go ahead, Zach, bring it up on the screen. Uh, oh. And this is the this is the compilation. Ready? Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Hi, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> She's so pissed. I know. He's hiding. It. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Just stalk. 
That's a great reaction sound. Oh, so he's, he's waiting. She's in the bathroom. She pops out. <laughs> Crazy face. And she always laughs. Mm -hmm. Or Afterwards. usually. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Her facial expressions are so good. The faces she makes are so funny. No wonder he keeps doing it. I know. Now he's. <laughs> 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 oh my oh my god. The face she makes is so great. <laughs> anyway, so, so good. I just peed. I just peed, she said. Yeah. That's so oh good. God, I'm having a hard time Seriously? stopping. I got, I got one more. One more. Okay. Come on. Okay. Do a good scream. Do a good scream. Oh, she's holding the baby. Hold Don't, the drop baby. The baby. Don't drop the baby. Don't drop the baby. Don't drop the baby. You're risky right now. <laughs> <laughs> Her face. She wanted to hit him. <laughs> okay. She wanted to hit him. Anyway, so that's Oh, that's so good. I, it had me, it had me rolling. Like I, I was laughing pretty good, man. Like <sighs> My, I, don't, I don't do, a, I don't do a whole lot of scare panks or prank panks. Panks. <laughs> well, spare. I don't do too many spanks because I just know that Lindsay would get so legitimately angry with me. Yeah, would be upset. Uh, I have to wait for her to like do something to me, and then I get to do. I get like one time back. Right. Okay. But if, but if I instigated it too much. Fair, fair. All right, let's move on to the next thing I found for the to you from internet. And okay. again, these pictures, you'll find them on the uh, on the Facebook and Instagram at Is We Dumb. <laughs> the, this one sent me down a little bit of a, of a rabbit hole. Okay. Zach, I'm, I'm ready for you here. And this was sent our way whoa, whoa. from Dummy Danny, who, this is just a, this is like a Facebook clip, right? So someone took a screenshot and sent whoa. this to me. Um, the guy who posted it, I do not know who he is. Uh, but he's posting about, you know, he's try get, trying to get into some new art, and I hope it's edgy enough, and all that kind of stuff. But there's an artist named Keith Bowdwee who's inserting paint into his ass and squirting it out, paint enemas, and then he makes asshole abstractions where he just, like, basically poops on a giant canvas. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> Are you seeing this? I am seeing that, and I guess... You know what? It's like that thing, there's a sucker born at every minute. <laughs> if, if you... Can find idiots to buy your butthole art. Yeah, then I guess good for you. Right, I'm not gonna buy it. I immediately got way more confident with my artistic abilities when I saw this. I was like, dude, I can totally shit paint. And I'm like, I'm not a big like Jackson Pollock, like the whole like splatter canvas yeah, thing. Yeah. I just never. But I'm like, get out of here. Right. Like, like I understand there's arguments for like, but the composition of the colors. Right. Nah, somebody's just uh, pulling off some bullshit. Right. Exactly. And then this did send me down uh, a rabbit hole, as you can you can imagine it would. Right. Okay. Um, uh, because I was I was definitely fascinated. I same thoughts that you had. I was like, who, who the fuck is buying this? Oh no, is it selling for so much money? Um, okay, but I, that was one thing, and that guy did some pretty weird stuff, right? And I guess but, you know, and I guess art's subjective. If you can make a million dollars for a butthole painting, right? I'll you deserve fucking every penny of that if you can pull that off. I'll buy. It. You have to pay me to take it. But, <laughs> right, right. But there might, might be some people that like butthole paintings. And, and, and by take it, uh, I mean, I, I won't put it in my house. Yeah. I'll take it straight to the dump yeah, and exactly. fucking just yeah, smash it in pieces. It's out there. There's weird stuff. You can go buy an right. asshole shit painting. <sighs> uh, it reminded me of our of our starting question, though. Oh, yeah. Maybe just be sneezing and shitting all over a canvas. And making it art. I, I just... You know, you know who I bet gets the most angry about something like that if it's selling well. Oh, somebody who went to seven years of school, like for composition and everything. Uh -huh. I wish I knew more art terms, but you know what I'm talking about. They That's went to art school, art stuff, composition, brush school. They, mo they mostly focus on composition. <laughs> yeah, composition of art. They took seven years of composition school. Art, art, art. <laughs> but like, but like, they they're really good at it. Uh, palette, palette. They know they know palettes and color wheels. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> primaries. That's another one. <laughs> no primaries and secondary colors and all the, everything. <laughs> But, but like they can do a really, really good landscape or portrait or whatever you right. want to call them. Uh -huh. And then this, and then, the, but they can't sell them <laughs> yeah. or they sell them for like 50 bucks. It's like, it's, it's in a coffee really shop nice. somewhere. Yeah. It's been sitting gathering dust in a coffee shop for two years. And then this son of a bitch is like, <laughs> squirt it on a paint. Buy it. <laughs> I picture him being drunk when he does it too. <laughs> <Right>. Just <laughs> like laughing a little bit. <laughs> You've outdone yourself today, mm -hmm. Keith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Walking. His house is just paint drips. Oh man. Uh, so anyway, this, this uh, landed me in a place uh, of a video that's called Plop Egg. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and bring that up. <laughs> uh, and what you see here Whoa. is a naked <laughs> naked lady. Like it? Standing over the top of like two painting ladders, right? Okay. They're raised up, but they're also, they lay horizontal, horizontal so you can walk on them, right? Yep. So what she's going to do here is she's going to drop this little cover, stand over this, oh. and shit out paint eggs. Whoa. Onto she the... Pu she pushing paint eggs into her butt. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And she just pooped out an actual <laughs> egg full of paint. 
And there's just all these people watching. And there's all these people watching <gasps> in front of this museum. And she just is pooping eggs out, man. Man, she's uh, dropping those eggs. How many eggs did she get in her butt before? Is it like? Cause they, they, she, they, I think she stops to refill. And then she puts another egg in there. She stops there. and squishes. Ooh. And she's got to let that one out. Oh, the cream colored one bug, bugged me. <laughs> I don't know why. Uh, wow. You think anyone else is... Look at this guy back, guy back here in the suit. Like, he's coming back from lunch. He's like, what? You're not going to believe what I saw today, honey. I... Guys, there's part of us... Well, guys say guys. Guys, girls, whatever. But, like, human beings the, with the primal sexual thing. She has a very attractive figure. Right. And she's a very attractive woman. And already, I'm like, nah, I'm kind of into this. <laughs> Just like, like, like the guy I come across real hard on, because, you know, like, uh, hard against, because that's not what I'm into. Right. But then this lady does it, I'm like, all right, okay, I kind of like it. I buy that. But would you watch me shit out? No. Oh. For a laugh, I would. Okay. So for, you would, for her, you would I would watch and be like, oh, I like this. Uh, this is interesting. This is symbolism of like life oh, I get and it. the circle of life. I, I would get this. <laughs> I get it. This and is then great. if you would be like, what a fucking idiot. <laughs> Look at this dumb out his paint eggs. <laughs> shit on paper. Like shit on paintings like the rest of us, bro. <laughs> Quit pooping eggs. Plop egg. At least she made it into a, well, I guess they both made it into a kind of performance. There's something cl uh, clearly wrong with me because uh, the guy, I'm like, puh, dumb. And her, I'm like, I like it. <laughs> I just, I mean, that's what to you from internet is all about. Mm -hmm. I had no idea that that world existed. And guess what? Now I do. If Lindsay just decided to like, I'm going to put an egg in my butt and then poop, <laughs> poop, poop a paint egg out in front of you, I'd be like, okay. Where's, more I'm interested. Where's this going to lead? Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> and she goes, follow, and then follow your passion. Going, and then you're going, no. No. No, no, no. Keep the paint eggs in your butt. I, will, I can put them in your butt. Mm -hmm. And then I'm happy to be a part of it in some accessory way. <laughs> but I don't want to be the primary you catch egg them. giver. You catch them. Your job, she runs around Ooh. and then you have to try to catch them so they don't fall and break. So it's like a fun, like, <laughs> like ch chase game where she poops eggs and you catch them. I'm a little bit disturbed with myself right now. Me too. Because this is a this is a ridiculous fantasy, and I feel like I'm half hard. <laughs> I, I I wasn't I saying anything. I even know I didn't know this about. I just learned, I just learned something about myself. <laughs> I learned, Maybe you're an artist. I like butt eggs. <laughs> I like butt eggs. Seems like a fun way. It's a fun way to celebrate <laughs> Easter. Uh, now this boom. Guess what? New tradition at the Paisley household. New tradition. Kids. Daddy's a rabbit. Kids go to bed. <laughs> Daddy's a rabbit. I was picturing kids go to bed. You had your Easter egg hunt. And then nighttime, uh, daddy egg hunt. Mom is going to poop out some paint eggs. Come to get ya. And dad's going to, you know, just make sure that there's none left over in there when it's right. all done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what a world. <laughs> what a world. <laughs> uh, so we also, we have a brand new segment. We're going to officially title uh, this next thing. Okay. Uh, we have been doing these these updates of sorts okay. of, uh, of dummies writing in. And we decided we had to call it something um, fitting, but also offensive for the hundreds <laughs> of emails that we get every week. Okay. So it's, it's time now for Junk Mail. It's Junk Mail. <laughs> I like that. You like that? I like, I like that, that little jingle. Little, little intro? Makes me happy. If, if you want to check it out, you can go to uh, you know Bad Magic Productions on YouTube, and that's where all these episodes Aww. are up. So our first update set in by Dummy Ryan, and I thought this was so, so funny. Uh, there, I checked it out. There's a podcast out there by a little kid by the name of Dan Cummins <laughs> called All Things Fishing. <laughs> <laughs> There's another Dan Cummins who really is an avid yeah, fisherman. It, little kid. And like uh, I listened to his first episode. He talks about like the quick introduction. Uh, no, he talks about like... Um, uh, like fishing lures, okay. Like uh, like like the differences between beginning and then intermediate and expert fishing lures, and like why that is you have hilarious. to. And it exists. And I thought he has two ratings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How much fun would it be, dummies, if we can uh... go go help this little guy out? Uh, I we, I mean, this was sent in. It was on Apple Podcasts, and it's called All Things Fishing. Dan Cummins. It just came out in 2020. Uh, only has two five star ratings. Probably his parents. Mm -hmm. Let's hop over there. And hit this guy with some five star ratings. Be nice though, because he is a little kid. Like he True. sounds like he's probably twelve. I think I think it should be stuff like "You're my favorite Dan Cummins." Right. Exactly. You are far and away the best yeah, Dan Cummins out don't there. Don't say something dumb. Don't say like "plop." Yeah, yeah the, the three out of five stars would just confuse him. <laughs> confuse him a lot. Go. Mm -hmm. I mean, and maybe it is a great show. And he's put he's putting it together. That's he's adorable. Doing it, man. That's yeah. adorable. Uh, this next one was sent our way, and this was an update sent by Dummy Izzy, who writes, "Good morning." I've been using your would you rather questions to make my classes or uh, to wake my classes up as a secondary science teacher. The responses are always interesting and hilarious. I hope she did not use the would you fuck your mom or your dad one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. She goes, especially when I have a pupil who is deaf and needs okay. everything signed to him. Mm -hmm. I get to watch as it's signed to see his instantaneous reaction. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So uh, when asked him, would you rather have cheesy Dorito fingers or taste buds in his butt? His head snapped to me with pure horror. 
And he started shaking his head and frantically siding with me that he didn't want either. <laughs> Before I told him he needs to pick one or yep. I'll choose for him, now his head fell into his hands and he looked uh, he looked defeated and signed taste buds in his butt, which uh, now I know how to sign. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure I can ask them about the parent one, you know, which you can fuck once yeah, or whatever. Sure, sure. Uh, but this week, without jeopardizing my job, we get it. So please keep up the hilarious shows. Awesome. You both always really give me something fresh and notes to watch listening to each week. Ah, that's Izzy. great. Yeah, so Thanks, Izzy. Yeah, I thought that was I thought that was great. Can you imagine that? Oh. It reminded me of the yeah. sign language the other yeah. week with the, the fuck you. And yep. the, the yep. sign language lady uh, did it right back. So Be- Before you say this last one, hey, Zach, can you write a note just so I don't forget when the show's over? Uh, I, I want to talk to my lawyer about trying to get a copyright claim on that fishing kid and just get his uh, thing taken down. All right. Well, you got it. <laughs> Thank you. Well, you can start sending him flexes <laughs> with your license plate. <laughs> and like fishes you catch, you're like coming for you, right? Coming for you, little shit. Oh, God, Our God. next update this week comes from the worst thing to be taken away from you at TSA question from a couple oh, of episodes yeah. ago, and this one cracked me up. Dummy Chris writes, "Hey Dan and Joe, my dumb TSA moment happened three years ago when I was flying from Africa to LAX. I left Africa, had a layover in Qatar, uh, which oh, wow. was super fancy airport, and bought a seven hundred dollar bottle of scotch at the duty free store. Damn. Yep, they placed my booze in a bag and sealed it with a sticker that allowed me to get it into my carry on luggage, and I didn't think more of it. Of it, I made it to Germany, and they accepted my plastic bag with a sticker, and I thought I was home free. I landed in Atlanta and went through customs, and they scanned my bag and told me uh, I would have to turn over my liquor. So uh, instead of just throwing it away, I drank the entire bottle. Holy shit. Got barred from my next flight, <laughs> was escorted out of the airport, and ended up essentially <laughs> wasting my scotch and missing out of the flight I've already paid for <laughs> to keep it from being thrown away. <laughs> that's an awesome story, though. Anyway, that's my dumb, dumb TSA story. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I could see myself doing that. Like, yeah, fuck uh, you. Like, I'm not going to waste yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get so drunk. Yeah, $700 <laughs> bottle, of sc- bottle of scotch. That's some good-ass scotch. Get kicked out of the airport. Oh, right, right. come on. Right. There's a sticker on it. You don't see a sticker though, <laughs> buck a buck a TSA agent. Come here. Seen seen hammered people at the airport is so great. <laughs> it is. When they're like Vegas blasted. is my favorite. Yeah. yeah. My favorite, and I make note every time I go to Vegas, mm-hmm. I, I get there and right when I get off the plane, I see how sad everybody is. Mm-hmm. And I go, That's gonna be me. Like don't forget <laughs> you're everyone who's getting out coming right. in. They are pumped. Yep. Everybody who is sitting there getting on an airplane are dead. Those casinos weren't built on winners. <laughs> they were. They are no. built on sadness. <laughs> exactly. The uh, sadness we, pyramids. And we've got one more quick update. This is coming from Dummy Jason. It's an update on the chicken arms from episode three. Oh, yeah. Um, they're, they're bulking these things up. Go ahead and bring it up, Zach. This is the oh. muscle chicken arm. So no longer are they just floppy doll arms. Okay. These are hulked out chicken arms. 807 sales. I yeah. like it. And you can buy them on XCOM. That's the name of the uh, the, the page on Etsy. Mm-hmm. I guess mm-hmm. that we'd get a little little update on that. Thank you. Yeah, they're getting professional uh, with these things. Those are sweet. Yes, they are. Uh, yeah, so anyway, that's uh, that's the end of the show. That's a good way to end it. Little, chicken, little muscle chicken arm guy. <laughs> I, I, you, I have a count. You've pulled four aphids out of your face today during the show. So oh, it's been a crazy aphid <laughs> situation. I know, I, I'm sure when I go wash my face, there's going to be another aphid I'll find. Just shake them out of your head. They love me. I think they're dandruff. Uh, thanks to Zach Cohen for creating some of the custom music beds for the show. Thanks to Logan and Kate, the key, at Spicy Club for continuing to pump out the best merch. Again, brand new merch up right now yeah. at badmagicmerch.com or at isbedumb.com. Thanks to Zach Flannery for producing and directing and just being so damn hot. Oh, oh man, look at that, look at that jaw. Uh, look at that guy. Stop it. Stop okay. it now. Okay. Uh, be sure to follow us Instagram, Facebook at Is Be Dumb. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. All of our shows are on there. Uh, all Bad Magic Productions. So you got Is Be Dumb, you got Scared to Death, mm-hmm. and you've got Time Suck. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, just go there and you'll get content for the whole week. Mm-hmm. Take care of you. Have something you want to see on the show? Email that to dumb at isbedumb.com. Any other general questions, info at isbedumb.com. And keep on subscribing. We have over, oh, yeah. thank is you, it over thank 1,500. You. I think. Oh, ratings and reviews. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. yeah on uh, and it helps. Yeah, on uh, on the Apple yep. at the time. Yep, just on Apple. I know we've stayed. Uh, we're floating in the top hundred now consistently, mm-hmm. which is so it's so competitive. So many podcasts have launched in 2020 alone. That that's it's all because of guys, you you guys and gals. Yep. Uh, listening, telling your friends, and rating and reviewing. So keep doing that. Thank you. Keep doing that. It helps Thank us you. out, and we love you for it. Love you. Uh, let's get let's get out of here. Okay. Wow. Neat fact. Wow. Neat fact. And this is one that I'm, uh, I want you to think about every day. Okay. Go ahead. It's a big ask. It is, but you're going to do it. Did you know a blob of toothpaste is called a nurdle? I just, I, I pushed a nurdle down the sink this morning. Yeah, <laughs> you did. I mean, I didn't know that. I feel like it's something I push out my butt. A nurdle. You should, you should do nurdle paintings. I am. Thank you. Bye, guys. Yes, yeah.